Hello everyone, what's going on? I'm Gaff the Master 974 back again today doing another Valve source code tutorial and today I'm going to outline how to add a full holstering sequence into Source 2013 single player and multiplayer mods. Now this was recommended in the comments by a name that I'm definitely going to be butchering, uh, Militar de Forcas Apostas 2559. Thank you very much for the comment and apologies for butchering your name. But they wanted to know how to add this and also how to resolve some pretty serious issues that the Valve Developer Wiki article doesn't really resolve. So that's what I'm going to try and do today. So one of the first things you want to do as per usual is navigate to your source code and open up the game's solution file. And you want to go to the client project and you want to find the file c underscore base combat character dot h. And somewhere in that file, you want to add a friend class c underscore show weapon. And on the server, you want to find base combat character dot h. And somewhere in that file, add a friend class c show weapon, as you'll probably see in the video. I don't think this is strictly necessary to do, but just do it to be on the safe side. Now for Source 2013 multiplayer mods only, what you would want to do next is go to player.h and somewhere in the player.h file, I would say above either a public protected or private section, I want to add a public section and add ball is spawning. And then inside the curly brackets, add return m underscore b spawning, and then a protected section, and then add a ball called m underscore b spawning. And then again for source 2013 multiplayer mods only, you want to go to hl2mp player.cpp, and you want to find the give default items function. And above the calls with where you see the give named item stuff, you want to add m underscore b spawning equals true. And then after the give named item section, you want to add m underscore b spawning equals false. So for both multiplayer and single player mods, you can do this next step. Uh, you want to go to base combat character underscore shared dot cpp and you want to go to the weapon underscore switch function. And you want to remove the m underscore h active weapon equals p weapon line. And for multiplayer mods only, you then want to go to the weapon underscore can switch to function. And after the if p vehicle and exclamation mark p player arrow using standard weapons in vehicle section, you want to add a hashtag if ndef client underscore dll, then if P player arrow is spawning, then return false, and then hashtag end if. And so for single player and multiplayer mods, uh, now you want to go to base combat weapon underscore shared dot cpp, and there's a big block of code which I will leave a link to in the description of the video. It is to the Valve Developer Wiki article for this tutorial, and there's a big section which goes into the C show weapon class and all of the functions and it will just take me too long to go through absolutely everything all the codes there so you can just select all of it and copy and paste it into your file wherever you want to personally I put it right near the top of the file and you'll see that in the video and then you want to go down to the default deploy function and you want to do another sort of copy and replace I don't think too much changes with the, you know, Valve Developer Wiki article codes and what is already present. But I would say just to be on the safe side, you can copy and paste replace the default deploy function. So at this point, you can go ahead and compile the solution and it should compile without any issues. However, when you actually play the game, there are going to be some issues. So one of the first major issues is if you die while you are switching weapons, then there's a very real possibility that the game's going to crash on you. Basically because I guess the owner of the weapon in question is set to null instead of the player and that leads to out of bounds accesses and reads and that just causes the game to crash. 
However, if you're lucky or unlucky, however you choose to look at it, then you can actually end up in a situation where you get a first person view model getting drawn to the screen, even though the play is dead, which looks a bit weird. And there's another issue where if you run out of ammo, then you'll basically be stuck trying to switch weapons, but then you actually cannot switch weapons. You'll just be stuck switching weapons forever until you pick up ammo for the weapon, and then you'll just immediately switch to the weapon that you tried switching to or the game tried to switch you to. So there's some pretty serious issues, and I'm going to go through what I feel are the resolutions to these problems. So first of all, you want to go to the frame update pre-entity thing function inside of the C show weapon class section that you would have just copied and pasted into base combat weapon shared.cpp. And what I decided to do is replace the entire contents of the if statement, which is just show weapon. And you want to replace that with a C base combat character called asterisk PBCC which equals m underscore p weapon arrow get owner and then if pbcc and pbcc arrow is alive then show weapon else clear show weapon as you'll see in the video. Now this simple change right here should prevent the game breaking crash from happening and also from the first person view model being drawn when you're in the third person death cam, at least in Source 2013 multiplayer anyway. However, there's still the issue with the running guys of ammo situation, I should say. So uh, let's just get into the resolution for that. So what I decide to do is change the set show weapon function. So instead of outputting void, it would output a ball instead. So just simply change the void to a ball and then after the show weapon function, just add return true. And then after the if delta is exactly equal to zero and the corresponding else statement, then you just want to add return false. And you'll see where to put that in the video. And then you want to go back to the default deploy function. And I choose to add a ball called show weapon in front of the g underscore show weapon dot set show weapon line. And then immediately after that, I add if exclamation mark show weapon, then reload or switch weapons, as you'll see in the video. And then the next step is to go to the reload or switch weapons function. And you should see a line that starts with something like if get weapon flags and item flag no auto switch empty equals false. And you just want to add hashtag if ndef client underscore dll. Then if p owner arrow get last weapon arrow lookup activity of act vm holster inside the speech marks and that does not equal minus one, then p owner arrow clear active weapon and then hashtag ndiff. And you'll see all of that in the video, but one thing to note is that for Source 2013 single player mods, get last weapon doesn't exist, but you can use the weapon underscore get last function instead. It does basically the same thing. And the one last change that I would recommend is to go to weapon shotgun.cpp. And there's another similar section which goes if exclamation mark get weapon flags and item flag no auto switch empty. And you want to add for Source 2013 multiplayer mods, hashtag if ndef client underscore dll, then p owner arrow clear active weapon, and then hashtag ndif. And for Source 2013 single player mods, you can just add p owner arrow clear active weapon. The reason for this is because Source 2013 multiplayer mods, they have the shotgun code on both the client and the server. And if you try accessing the clear active weapon function on the client, it's going to result in an error because that function doesn't exist. So we only want to do this check on the server, but for Source 2013 single player mods, the shotgun code is only on the server. So you don't need to even check if you are on the server or not. Okay, those should be all of the issues resolved. So what I've outlined in this video should fix an issue where a weapon that doesn't have any ammo would get stuck endlessly in a holstering animation. But this should also fix an issue where weapons that don't have a holster animation, such as the grenade, the RPG, 
the bug bait, the slam, or even the SMG1, where you would cause a weapon switch, but then you don't have the ability to see the ammo count or even use the weapon. That's something that I ran into when I was testing this. So that should also be an issue that you don't even run into. And also the issues where the game crashes or a first person view model gets drawn to the screen when you're dead when it's not supposed to happen. Now, I do need to mention there is one more issue with this functionality that I actually haven't been able to resolve. Although I haven't really looked into it too deep, but any of my changes just haven't worked. Which is, if you are in the middle of this holstering sequence, then you can still fire the weapon, even though you're supposed to be deploying or holstering the weapon, sorry. So, there shouldn't be any opportunity for the player to attack, except the player is able to attack. So, that's obviously something you might not want to have happen. And as I said, I haven't actually figured out how to stop that from happening. So that's probably the one issue in this tutorial that is just going to be left as an unresolved question, I guess, for the audience to try and figure out for themselves. But other than that, that is how to add a full holstering sequence into Source 2013 single player and multiplayer. Not too difficult and not too long of a video, hopefully. But as always, let me know what you think in the comments and if there's any other issues with this that I've not realised or if there's any other suggestions for videos you want me to possibly look into and maybe one day I'll have a GitHub page available where you can access the code from the Valve Source Code Tutorial series that I've done so far. Minus shader stuff because that is on a per person, per system kind of basis and there's some projects that I just don't think I can be redistributing shall we say. But with all that being said and done, as per usual, thank you for watching, take care out there, peace out, see you later, and have a great day.